Hello everyone, FPL Raptor here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video we have my Game Week 28 team selection and a little bit of a spoiler, I think I'm selling Haaland this week, so in today's video we will discuss potential replacements. If you are enjoying the content here in this channel, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe, but without further ado, let's jump into it. So very briefly before we jump into my Game Week 28 team, just on Game Week 27, I did finish on 101 points and that was enough for a green arrow, finally. It has been a little bit of a while, 41k to 26k, so a pretty reasonable size green. Let me know down below in the comments, did you manage to break 100 points this week? And if so, what was your score? Don't worry if you didn't, don't worry if you had a bit of a poor week, we all have them and we can just look forward to blank Game Week 28. And we've known about blank Game Week 28 for a while now and it's actually not that bad on paper, only a few teams blanking and I think most of us will probably be able to field around seven, eight, nine players as a minimum. And generally, I don't think it's the best week to free hit, but I also don't think it's a terrible one. So if you're looking at your team and thinking, I only have seven or eight players and those players I'm not particularly happy with, by all means, pull the trigger on the free hit or maybe the wild card. But for most of us, I think we can probably get by without any chips this week. And I don't think you need to field 11. And we will discuss that when we look at my team in its entirety. I don't think in blank weeks you want to focus on quantity. I think you want to focus on quality. And if you think you've covered the main three or four players that will have high ownership and that you think will score well, and you've covered some of the key defenses, then probably you'll be fine. And even if it's a small red, it's not the end of the world. It's really those big double game weeks that I feel like that's when you make up the rank. That's when you can get those monster scores, as we've seen in game week 27. So moving on to game week 28, I'm currently lining up in a 4-2-2. So as you can see by that, I don't have a full team at the moment. I only have nine players. So two players blanking and the three Brighton assets on the bench. I'm probably looking at trying to get out 10 players this week. It won't be a full 11, but I'm perfectly happy with that. I've got one free transfer and 3.2 million in the bank. So starting off with the defense, I do have some Chelsea defensive cover because as you can see, I don't have Chilwell at the moment. And I know he's a player that is on everyone's watch list. He's on my watch list as well, performing very well, scored in game week 27. So he's definitely someone that I'm looking to bring in. But at the moment, I am happy that I at least have some Chelsea cover with Kepa. And I think Everton at home is just a slightly better fixture than Leicester at home for Raya. So I do have the option to go for the double up on the Brentford defence because I do have Henry as well. I just think I would rather diversify a little bit, spread the risk. And I think back the keeper that has the slightly better fixture and is playing in a slightly better defence. So at the moment, I'm currently planning on playing Kepa ahead of Raya. If you have that similar decision, let me know down below. Are any of you potentially considering starting Raya? Because really Brentford's defensive data has been pretty decent recently and Raya does make a lot of saves, so I don't dislike it, but for now, Kepa gets the nod. As I said, I do have Rico Henry, and I'm perfectly happy having him for game week 28. I don't really like the Brentford double in 29, and I think if you were wildcarding this week, one thing that would be very different to game week 26 and 27 wildcarders is that you would probably have a maximum of one Brentford asset because it's an okay fixture in game week 28, but it's not a great double in 29, and then I don't necessarily love their fixtures after that either. But for this week, Henry's absolutely fine. I then have a double up on the Newcastle defence against Nottingham Forest away. If this was Nottingham Forest at home, I would be so much happier. But Forest are so good at the city ground. We've been saying this all season and they've been consistently really good at home. I think if Newcastle were at home, so if it was away for Forest, I would very much be considering a Trippier captaincy because Newcastle being so consistent, Trippier gets attacking returns and bonus points for fun. But the fact that it's at the city ground, I don't feel fully comfortable captaining Trippier. But a double up on the Newcastle defence is very nice. Again, I think if you were on a game week 28 wildcard, I would still probably consider it. Maybe you go for someone like Fabian Cher instead, but I'm very happy to have Botman and Trippier this week. And fingers crossed for a Newcastle clean sheet. And then the fourth and final defender in my starting 11 is Zinchenko against Crystal Palace at home. A really nice fixture. Crystal Palace haven't scored for four games in a row now. So if you think that will continue, which it probably won't forever, Zinchenko is actually a perfectly fine captaincy shout. There are a few defenders this week who I don't mind. Chilwell is another one. Trippier you could, and Zinchenko you could as well. Like I said, Crystal Palace just can't score goals. They went three games without having a single shot on target. And then they went the fourth game without scoring a goal once again. So they are really struggling but I just don't like captain defenders because all it takes is one mistake and it doesn't even have to be a big mistake. Just one defender slipping, Crystal Palace score and all of a sudden you need an attacking return from Zinchenko to even get close to some of the other captaincy options. So that's why I tend to prefer not captaining a defender but I don't necessarily hate it. The fifth and final de defender is Estepinian. I am considering slightly selling Estepinian for Chilwell. Two reasons. Number one, I love Chilwell and I think he's a great option. Gives me an extra fixture this week and I like the double in 29 for Chelsea. And also, 
for between game 28 and 29, there is an international break. And the second fixture for Estepinian is about three and a half, four days before the first fixture of game week 29 for Brighton. So he's playing in Australia. Then he has to get the plane back. There'll be a bit of jet lag. And then only a few days later, he then has to play for Brighton. So there is a small chance that Estepinian misses the first game of game week 29. And he obviously blanks in 28 too. So potentially there could be justification to do Estepinian to chill. Well, the reason I'm maybe not going that way is just at the moment, I love the Estepinian double in 29. I really do like that for Brighton. Brighton also have a further three double game weeks after game week 29 as well. So I kind of want to keep my Brighton triple up for that reason too. And I just think that Chilwell isn't guaranteed to play every game either. He, he looks relatively nailed, but he's also not 100% nailed. So at the moment, I'm probably looking at not bringing in Chilwell, but he is one of my top options that I really want this week. Let me know down below in the comments if you're potentially looking at Chilwell. But that's the defense in a really strong position. Let's take a look at the, the very bare midfield. So this should be a little bit of a shorter section than usual for the midfield because I only have two that are playing and three players blanking at the moment. And I'm probably not planning on making a transfer in the midfield. We'll start with McAllister and Matoma on the bench. As I said in the Estepinian section... I don't want to sell my Brighton assets because they have a really nice double in 29 and they're also likely to have three further doubles this season, two guaranteed and a third very, very likely. And the only week which they're likely to blank will be game week 32. I'm currently planning on playing my free hit in 32. So the only week where I won't want my Brighton assets really is the week I'll play my free hit and then I'll have them for the other three doubles. So I don't really want to sell any of my Brighton assets for that reason. And then Rashford, I don't want to sell either because he's probably the best captaincy option in game week 29. And when he does play, he's absolutely exceptional at the moment. He's got really, really decent data, passing the eye test, probably still on penalties too. And so I see no reason to sell him. So yes, it's not ideal to have three blanking midfielders, but I can't justify selling any of them at the moment for me, which leaves me with just the two that I have and arguably two of the best options and, and arguably two really good caps at the options as well, which is Madison and Saka. I'll start with Madison. Brentford away, a really decent fixture. I know it's a bit of a clash with Henry. And if you have maybe Henry and Rayo already, bringing in Madison is a real clash there. But in a blank game, we can in any game week, you can't always avoid these, these clashes between your players. And I just think Madison, in and of his own right, is, is a really good option this week. He's got really decent data. He's accumulated in the last two games about a 1.4, 1.5 expected goal involvement. He hasn't had any returns in those weeks, but I feel like it's coming. If you've been watching him in the recent weeks, he's really passing the eye test. He's creating so many chances. He's creating something like six or seven chances in the last two games. I think it was three or four big chances. He looks really good. I just feel like there is a monster hall brewing. I don't know if it'll be this week. I don't know if it'll be in game week 29. I just, I get this sense with Madison. I always seem to time it quite well. And I just feel like something is happening at the moment with Leicester and with Madison. And I just feel like on the horizon, something big could come. So if it's in 28 or 29, I don't really mind. Or even in game week 30, but I am very, very happy to have Madison in the team. And then Saka at the moment, you can see has the vice armband. I may well captain Saka. Really strong data, passing the eye test on penalties, all of the things you want playing at home as well. I just think that there's someone that's a slightly better captaincy option for me, which we'll see when we move on to the attackers. But I really like him for this week. No need to sell him. I may sell him in game week 29 because he doesn't double, but we don't need to think about it this week. So nice and simple. Only two midfielders, three blanking. Not going to make any transfers. So let's move on to the three forwards because that's where the transfers could happen. So we'll start with the man that currently has the armband, Harry Kane. I do think for me, it's between Kane, Saka and Tony. I like captain in penalty takers and I could potentially be bringing in, I almost definitely will be bringing in a penalty taker for Haaland too. I just like captain in the penalty taker. So that's probably the only reason I'm not currently considering Madison and the likes of Trippier. I like that added benefit of even if they have an absolute shocker and we've seen this multiple times, especially with the likes of Salah potentially at points, they can have an absolute shocker, have a penalty and come away with a goal and potential bonus points too. So for that reason, I, I always tend to lean towards a penalty taker and I try to lean towards players that are also good at penalties. And I think Kane, Saka and Tony are three exceptional penalty takers, especially Kane and Tony. So at the moment, Kane's got it just for his consistency. I feel like he's got a slightly higher floor. He just seems to score in pretty much every week. And he's just involved in such a high percentage of Spurs' goals. Now, I know Tottenham aren't playing particularly well at the moment, but even when they're not playing well, Kane just seems to find a way to score. It might be a little bit price tag related. I don't think it is, and I hope it isn't because that is not a smart way to make a decision. Maybe it is. I'm acknowledging that there could be a potential price tag bias there, that because he's the premium, it just feels safer. But I feel like it's more to do with his consistency over the season for me. The reason that I maybe prefer Saka slightly for another reason is that of course he gets an extra point for a clean sheet which I think is very likely against Palace and also an extra point for a goal too so I'm currently weighing it up I'm probably not really considering Tony 
it's slightly between Kane and Saka for me. Moving on to Tony, he did pick up his ninth yellow card in game week 27, but very nicely for captainers in game week 27, he did pick up two attacking returns. So he's performing well, he's getting attacking returns, and in a similar way to Kane, he's involved in such a high percentage of Brentford's goals. If you think Brentford will score two or three goals against Leicester, there's a very good chance Tony comes away with two or three attacking returns. That's the way he plays. Everything goes through him. So I don't dislike a Tony captaincy, but for me, it's probably not on the cards. It does worry me slightly that he's obviously picked up his ninth yellow card now. If he gets booked in game week 28 and picks up his 10th yellow card, just in case you weren't aware, 10 yellow cards is actually a two game suspension. So if he gets booked in 28, he'll miss both games in game week 29. Of course, that's not a huge issue. I suppose we can just transfer him out. But for those of us building towards a bench boost, it does mean that you have to use one of your valuable transfers on taking out Tony in 29 when you probably wouldn't have planned on doing it. So fingers crossed for most of us that Tony doesn't get booked in game week 28. And if he gets booked, hopefully it's in like the second fixture of game week 29. Then finally moving on to the third and final forward and the second blanker in my starting 11. And we do have Erling Haaland. And as I teased at the start of the video, 95% likely to be selling Haaland this week. Now, I will appreciate he is still the best asset in FPL by some distance for me, even when you take into account price. I saw the five goals that he scored and he could have scored more in the Champions League. He is an exceptional FPL option, and I have no doubt he will continue to be for the rest of the season. And I also have no doubt that he'll do well against Liverpool in game week 29. But when I look at it on paper, he only has one fixture. And if I bring in someone like an Ollie Watkins Havertz, we'll discuss all of the options in the next section. I'm getting three fixtures in the time that Haaland gets one. So for those reasons, I will always back the extra fixtures, especially when there are some really nice options with good fixtures too. So I am going to be probably selling Haaland this week. Let me know down below in the comments. Are you going to do it or are you too terrified? Are you perfectly happy just having him for one in 29? Regardless of what I do with Haaland, he will be in my team for game week 30. So I will have a route back to Haaland and it will be, as I'll show you at the end of the video, it will be selling Tony in 30 to go back to Haaland. So it's only for game week 28 and 29. I'm not selling Haaland long term but I am probably looking at moving on, which we'll discuss in the next section. So this is the team. Like I said, at the moment, I've got nine players and I'm very happy with those nine players. I'm almost definitely going to sell Harlem, which will make it 10. And then I'll leave it there because I don't want to lose my Brighton triple up and I don't want to lose Rashford. So 10 players, let me know down below how it compares with your team. Let's now move on to discussing who's going to come in for Erling Haaland. So here is my current watch list for game week 28. And this is just for 20. I'll have a fresh one for 29. And as you can see, there are only five players because I don't want to replace any of my midfielders. I'm actually perfectly happy with my defense as well. So I don't really want to make a defensive transfer. It's only one replacement for Haaland that I need. And I don't think there's a great deal of options. So at the moment, I've got Chilwell on there. I'll start with him because he's the only defender. He's the only one that's not a forward here. I do really want Chilwell. I think he's great for 28 against Everton at home. I think he's great for 29 too. But I do wonder, are we just looking at Chilwell because he scored an absolute wonder goal in game week 27? If he didn't score that, would we be so keen? And maybe you sit there and say, yes, absolutely. Chilwell's so attacking. Chelsea defensive data isn't too bad at the moment. And he's got good fixtures. And I don't disagree. You can see here, fixture difficulty for game week 28, 29, 30, and 31. I've chosen those four just because I'm looking at free hitting in 32. Chilwell's looking really, really good as an option, but I do wonder how much the narrative would change if he didn't score that goal. Would it just be the fact that, yeah, Chilwell looks decent, he's keeping a couple of clean sheets, decent attacking threat. But as you can see, the numbers are strong too. 0.21 non-penalty expected goal involvement. So maybe Chilwell is a good option. I just wonder if we're slightly over-exaggerating how good Chilwell is because he recently scored and he's obviously not going to score every single week. So I like him but I'm not going to break my team to get him in. And I do think Esther Pinyan could outscore him over the next two or three game weeks. Then it moves into who are we going to replace Haaland with? And I've narrowed it down to four options. That is Isaac, Watkins, Havertz, and Jao Felix. Those four. I don't mind Ian Acho. My issue with Ian Acho is I don't think his minutes are 100% secure. And he just seems to miss big chances for fun. And I can't be bothered to have another player that I put in my team, shows really good data, and I just don't trust. And it, it frustrated me beyond belief watching recent games where Madison has just created so many chances for him and he's missed all of them. Now, 
that shouldn't impact my decision. I should be looking at this with an objective set of eyes, but I am an emotional person as much as any other, and I can't stand putting Ian Atchway on my team. So if you want him in your team, that's absolutely fine. I can't stand watching him miss another big chance, though. So for me, it's Isaac, Watkins, Havertz, and Jao Felix. Two Chelsea boys, obviously Watkins for Villa and Isaac for Newcastle. They all have a fixture in 28. They all double in 29, and they've all got decent fixtures all around. You can see Isaac got the eighth best in the league, Watkins the second, and as we said with Chilwell, Havertz and Jao Felix having the best fixture in the league. There isn't much to separate the four of them with data post-World Cup either. You can see Isaac at 0.7, non-penalty expected goal involvement, Watkins at 0.63, Havertz at 0.65, and Zhao Felix at 0.62. So I can't really sit here and suggest that one is significantly better than the other, either with the fixtures or with the non-penalty expected goal involvement. So what does it come down to? I think there are two things then. If you're not going to say that one has significantly better fixtures or better data, it comes down to two things. Number one is penalties, because that's the extra advantage that they can have. And number two is expected minutes. If I look at the two players that I think have the highest expected minutes, maybe Isaac, but I would say probably Watkins and Havertz. And then who are the two players that are on penalties? It's Watkins and Havertz. So that's why at the moment I'm looking at Watkins and Havertz ahead of Isaac and Felix, just for... I think slightly higher expected minutes, definitely for Watkins, he's absolutely nailed, but also for the penalties too. So I'm not ruling out Isaac and Felix, but I'm probably leaning slightly closer towards Watkins and Havertz. And just due to the minutes, I am probably looking at Watkins ahead of Havertz. I think it's tough because I don't think minutes matter too much if you expect Havertz to continue to star, but I just don't want to add another issue to my team. We've spoken about the fact that Tony could become an issue with yellow cards. We've spoken about the fact that just different things could happen over the international break. I don't want to add another issue into my team. Watkins is showing really good data. In recent weeks, it's even better as well. He seems to be on an upward momentum. He's got a real hot streak at the moment. I don't feel like I need to be overly clever with this. And in the past, I would have been, and I would have gone for like Xiao Felix to mix it up. But Watkins is putting up similar data, if not better. He's more nailed, more likely to get 90 minutes, and he's on pen. So it feels like a bit of a, not a no-brainer at the moment, but it feels like the sensible, logical decision to just bring Watkins in for Harden. And it's a really nice, like, I mean, a really nice fixture in game week 28 against Bournemouth at home. Bournemouth haven't actually been terrible lately, but I still think that is a nice fixture. So at the moment leaning towards Watkins. It has also helped. I read a few Aston Villa forums and a few fans over on Twitter have just said that everything's going through Watkins at the moment. They're almost just funneling every attack to him and there aren't many chances falling to anyone else outside of Watkins. And I just like that idea that the team are trying to feed him and that he's getting all these opportunities. Emery spoke about the fact that in training, Watkins has really been focusing on his movement in the box and his reaction and being a bit of a fox in the box and scoring those kind of tap-ins. So as you can see, I'm probably leaning Watkins. I would say at the moment... I'm 60% Watkins, 30% Havertz, and then 5% Isaac, 5% Felix. But I could bring in any of the four. Let me know down below. If you are currently looking at replacing Haaland, who are you going to bring in? Final section is just going to take a look at my team for Game Week 28, 29, and 30, just to show you how I'm currently planning on navigating the next few weeks. So guys, in this final section, I'm just going to very briefly, kind of in like a live stream format, just show you what my team's looking like for 28, 29, 30. 30, 31 ish, just to give you an idea on how I'm navigating the upcoming game weeks. So, in game week 28, let's say I do in fact do Haaland to Watkins. Whether I do Haaland to Watkins or Havertz or one of Isaac or Felix, it doesn't really matter. It won't massively change the way that my team looks for 29 and beyond. But let's say it is Watkins, because that's the way I'm leaning at the moment. As you can see, that does leave me with about 7.5, 7.6 million in the bank. But I need to keep some of that because I want to do Tony back to Haaland. And that is important to remember that if you're selling Haaland, I wouldn't be using that money to do loads of other things because you're probably going to want him back in and you're probably not going to want to sell Kane to do it. The good thing is that if you have Kane, you've got that as a backup. So worst case scenario, if you spread the funds, you can just do Kane back to Haaland. But I feel like you want to probably have Kane and Haaland. You probably want to keep that two premium structure. So game week 28, that would be the team. Moving on to game week 29, this is how it would look without any transfers being made. And for me, I would only have one free transfer. Some of you might have two free transfers. So I will be playing the bench boost in game at 29. And I would say that the realistic, and people ask, it doesn't really, well, people say that it doesn't really matter what your bench looks like for your bench boost. It does, because that gives you an idea of how effective the chip has been. So while it doesn't really matter who's on the bench, I'm trying to basically predict the three players that are likely to get me the worst score, setting up the bench how I usually would. And at the moment, that is a bench of, or the four, I should say. Raya, Henry, Saka, and Zinchenko. That's not a bad bench boost just like that. But I am likely to probably make two transfers to improve the team and in doing so, improve the bench. At the moment, 
I'm actually thinking two defensive transfers. The issue is I don't necessarily love any of the defenders. The only other two players that I could take out are the single players, which are Kane and Saka. I'm not going to take out Kane. And Saka's a tricky one because the two players that I would want are probably Bowen, who isn't actually on... Well, he didn't take the penalty in the recent game week. It was actually Ben Rama that took the penalty, which is massively against Bowen. His data's not that great. And West Ham just still don't look excellent. And then the other one would be Bruno Fernandes. But with Casemiro now suspended for four games and potentially a slightly deeper role that he's been playing. He hasn't played it in every game, but he's either been playing as part of the pivot or like a number eight alongside Fred. He's not necessarily playing a, a massively attacking role at the moment. I do just worry with Bruno Fernandes that it could be a case where he's playing quite defensive and having to cover a lot of the Manchester United defence because Casemiro's missing. So I don't actually see many midfielders that I would want ahead of Saka or that I would confidently say outscore him. So let's say I don't want to take out Kane and I don't want to take out Saka. That really does leave Henry and Zinchenko. The issue is Manchester United was the defence I was looking at, someone like Luke Shaw. But again, with Casemiro out... I'm not necessarily as interested. So I can't tell you exactly what I'm going to do here because I don't know. I could bring in a third Newcastle asset. I could potentially go for someone like a, a Liverpool defender, maybe hope that they improve. And then I could go for, for probably Chilwell. So I think at the moment, it probably would be as, as, a, as a definite transfer. Let's just say Zinchenko to Chilwell feels like a, a relatively okay one to make. It's only a slight upgrade in or a slight increase in funds going into that spot. And then I would probably bring in Chilwell for, let's say, Botman. So all of a sudden, the bench is looking a little bit stronger there. And then Henry's the other one. I could bring in Reese James if he's fit at this point, but that feels like a pretty risky play going for the double up on the slightly risky Chelsea fullbacks. That would be a triple up on the Chelsea defence. Or I could just suck it up and say Manchester United might be fine. They might be fine without Casemiro. They might still potentially keep clean sheets. And Luke Shaw is still quite attacking. So then I could bring in Luke Shaw and the bench would all of a sudden be looking a lot stronger. Something like that. So the bench boost would be looking fine and I would have the money in the bank then in game week 30 to do Tony to Haaland, which is the only transfer that I'm definitely lining up. So let's just get the team in a position where we can see kind of what it would be looking like. We're probably doing something like that. And then we would go, like I said, Tony back to Haaland, loads of money in the bank to do so. Haaland becomes the captain and life is good because Haaland's back in the team, along with the likes of Kane, Watkins, Madison. The team's looking really strong for game week 30. 431, which could actually have a double game week for a few teams, but we're going to wait for that. Could be like Brighton and Newcastle. It's actually looking fine again. We could captain Haaland. We've got our triple uh, Brighton against Chelsea on the bench. You could potentially play the likes of McAllister instead of Madison. I will probably use a transfer here because I'm likely to free hit in 32. So it'd probably be something like Madison out for a mid of some kind in this week that has a decent fixture in 31 and moving forward as well. It doesn't really matter at this point. The reason I would use the transfer is because going into 32, I would be free hitting or I'm likely to free hit at the moment and I don't want to burn a transfer. So I'd use one in 31. Going into 32, the reason I'm currently planning a free hit is because Manchester United, City, Brighton and Chelsea are all likely to blank those four. And at the moment, I've got Shaw, Rashford, Chilwell, Kepa, but I could play Raya, I suppose. McAllister, Estepinian, Matoma, Haaland. So at the moment, I've probably got seven players blanking if I make the moves that I've planned. I've also got Trippier and Botman against Tottenham, and I've got Kane, so that's a bit of a clash there. And just generally, the team isn't, isn't very good at all. So this makes sense for my team to probably free hit. And I don't really want to look any further than that because this is so far in the future and so many things could change. So that's the current plan. I feel like we're in a good position and I feel slightly more upbeat on the back of a green arrow. We're not too far. I'm only about 15, 20 points off the top 10K again. So a strong team, in, a strong game week 28, a strong bench boost in 29. Hopefully we're back close or into the top 10K and we can have a strong end to the season with a free hit in 32 and then dealing with 34 and 37 with just free transfers. Let me know what your current team is looking like for game week 28. Let me know what you're planning, how many players you'll be fielding and also let me know about captaincy too. So guys, there you have it. That is my Game Week 28 team selection. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you still watched to this stage, could you please do four things for me. Number one, please like the video. I do really appreciate it. Drop a comment down below of some kind to feed those greedy algorithm gods. Number three, please do subscribe. But number four, please follow me over on Instagram. I am posting more and more on there. I also always post on Twitter. You know I'm always active there, but I'm posting more and more on Instagram, my everyday life, but also using the stories just to talk about FPL generally and just to give you general updates. So if you're interested in having more, th more of my thoughts throughout the week about FPL and just seeing what I'm up to outside of FPL as well, please do follow the Instagram. I'll leave the link in the description and also probably in the pinned comment too. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.